So how are you going to get your front wheel off the ground, you ask? Well, it's as easy as that. So, with this, you just remove that, that, pull that out, drop your wheel. 22 on the big end, a 17 on the little end. The six millimeter Allen, and those bolts, when you replace them, you want to put a little bit of Loctite on them since it is a caliper. And when you do remove them, you want to have a bungee or something to suspend it with. You don't want to just hang it because uh, that's bad, but I've hung it before. Those are 12 millimeter bolts on the triple. Now when you undo these, I have seen them fall right to the ground instantly, but generally you have to give them a little nudge. But just keep in mind, you undo that last one, Next it could is fall. to take the fork boot off. One Phillips. So on to the second fork. Now, one of the things that I'm particularly fond of on my bike is the amount of attention that we put into the suspension. A friend of mine, Alex, owns Trackside Technologies. Spent a lot of time working on these springs, getting the spring rate just right, and spacers, and it's kind of a custom setup, and we spent a lot of time getting just the right amount of fluid in the fork oil levels just right. So what I'm gonna do before I take this thing off is I'm gonna loosen these two bolts, which I already have, gently pop the cap on there, which is 19 millimeter, and then I am going to use the stick and zip tie technique to check the exact fluid level in that fork. And then after I take it all apart and change the seals and reassemble it and get everything back on the bike, I'll fill it back up to that exact point with this bike in the same angle of attack and everything, hanging just like this. So I'll get really close to what it was before, um, regardless of whether the bike is on a stand or whatever. <clears throat> Generally they say uh, when you fill your forks, you know, and you're doing the rebuild, you should have them level and all that crazy stuff. But this technique should work and uh, I should get really close to the same fluid level that I had before. So I'm gonna measure them spring in, the spacer still in there, everything. And I'm gonna guess, well, I wanna use this side. <clears throat> I'm gonna guess that's gonna be about where I wanna be. Just right. All right. So there's my mark. Now, not only making a mark, I'm going to mark the angle too. And I'm gonna mark which way is it up. And I'm gonna mark where the zip tie goes. So mark the zip tie. I mark the angle. And then mark which way it was up. That way when I stick it back in. I'll know exactly where to do it. And this is actually a little bad. I probably went a little too deep. Because when you take it out, you're taking some oil with it. I don't know how much a milliliter is, but I'm sure it's like a milliliter. However, I am not that picky. Now put your cap back in. It doesn't have to be super tight because it's coming off again shortly. So that is under some spring tension. You want to get it started by hand because be easy to strip. Cheesy little aluminum, you know, the stainless steel. Get it started. And 
19 millimeter. Just put the socket back on it. Get it going. Just enough so you don't get any crap in there when you pull it out of the thing. Because you're going to have to take them off again anyway. But uh, you do have to tighten them enough so that they'll hold pressure when you go to blow out your seal with the compressor. I think the reason why my other one didn't pop out so easily was because it had a pretty bad leak. And I think a lot of it was, a lot of the air pressure was blown by on it. Anyway, now it's time to remove the other fork leg. Sometimes the uh, triple clamp will stick a little bit. So you want to stick a big screwdriver in there. Mostly you don't need the strength, you just want it big so you don't make little tool marks on there. And with one hand on it, because it'll drop to the floor like a mug. Spread them out just a smidgen. Being a little sticky for you. There you go. There you go, fork in hand. So again, taking a little screw out. Keep it pointed up unless you want to wear it. Don't lose that little bugger. And then if you look in there really tiny, there's a little itty bitty seal right there. And you don't want to lose that thing. Especially when you do what I'm about to do. Just dump it in here. Blow some air through that bitch. I got a feeling that this one's going to pop out a lot easier than the other one did. Because this seal is not toast. And it's not going to let the air blow by like the other one did. The other one was really messed up. It's been broken for a long time. It's not too tight. This thing's aluminum. Okay. See if we can pop this bitch out. Let's see if this one comes out right away. Oh, see? I'm rushing. There's the clip. Simple process. Put that with the rest of my parts. So earlier I took the fork seal out. But I swear that thing's just barely in there. The uh, the dust cover out. That thing's just barely in there. I mean you'd think it'd be able to blow out, but it doesn't take much. 
You don't even have to poke it that hard. It comes right out. All right, let's try some air. All right, well, in 10 minutes it took me to get this thing off, my compressor's out of gas, so I gotta turn my compressor back. All right, compressor's compressed. I got it on about 100 PSI. Fill it full of air. Here it comes. Oh, I'm gonna wear it. Oh, that thing's stiff. Last time it took about a good five minutes before it blew. Oh, well, my compressor is going to come on. Let's just let that thing cut. Ah, there you go. <laughs> Sweet. So the advantage of the compression method is that this thing's still perfectly good. You can tear it up, pulling it out of there. I mean, this was the good side; it wasn't leaking. But that's a serviceable part. I'm going to replace it, of course, but. I'm going to keep it in my pile of spares just in case I get another one that leaks. So you'll notice I use my filthy KTM to capture most of the splatter and most of the dirt absorb it. So, back to my fancy tool here. I've already got the seal started. Make sure it's all in there. Whatever tool you got, unless it's perfect, you want to spin it around. It's about right. You'll know if it's not in deep enough. The dust cover won't go down quite past the little ring on the inside where the clip's supposed to engage. smidgen on there earlier on the other one too I think you know on the video but I like to just put it on the inside because it's the outside and that's the part you want to be sticky and you want that thing coming out just a little bit of a haze oh man that one dropped right in my hand a little tap tap just to get it good seated
clip. I'm gonna give it a little bit of a stretch, really micro stretch, just so that it really engages in there. Good. Get that thing going. At the end of the day, you want to make sure that it's underneath in that groove. Because it sure will look like it's in that groove, and if it's not in that groove, it ain't going to hold shit. Okay then, we're up to beer two. Two reassembled forks ready to go. Okay, so I got the forks back on. <clears throat> Made sure I got my boots on. Important. I have to have the screw out on that time so it's easier to get to. I don't know how it comes stock, but I prefer that. And then you slide them all the way up and you're ready to go. Um, one thing that's critical here is that uh, only tighten the bottom, the bottom bracket, till you're done filling the oil. If you tighten these up, you won't be able to get the uh, caps off. So leave those loose, fill it up with oil. Screw them back on, tighten them down. Now the bottom bracket is going to keep it from spinning and it's going to make it easy for you to undo it. So, I use the stick method. Had my stick. Remember my stick. I had my angle. I had my front. I had my zip tie. Stick it in there. Pop it out. And if you'll notice, it's a little high. I don't know if you can see it on the camera. The line's here and that's there. Well, I raised it quite a bit, so I raised it like a half an inch. Um, I want it a little bit more stiff. Some of the stuff I've been doing has been bigger drops and they've been bottoming out a little bit and uh, some of the riding I've been doing in the desert really whooped out with big whoops. And uh, I want it to be a little stiffer and we'll see. So there's a fine line between this line and that line. There must be something that takes up a lot of space because it only takes like 30 milliliters to bring it up an inch and a half on the stick. Um, if you wanted to take it down, use a hose. Stick the hose in, bottom it out, put your thumb on it, pull it out, dump it into a bucket.